Welcome back to the welcome Charles Ogan experience. Welcome back to the experience. Charles Ogan experience. Christian Osbeck, welcome back. Good to see you. Good to see you. Good to see you. Yeah. Christian, you've got an instructional out at the moment. Judo Fanatics, is it? Or is it BJJ Fanatics? BJJ Fanatics and Judo Fanatics. You know, it'd be way funnier if we just ask questions, but don't actually give you the mic. Yeah. Okay, go. Talk about your instructional. <laughs> so my instructional is out. And it has been reviewed as the number one apparently beating Satoshi's, which is very strange. Fantastic. So guys, make sure you like, subscribe, go get Christian Osbeck's instructional. I beg you, buy it. See you later. Ah, <laughs> shit, we've got to start again. No, no, it's good. Uh, shit. I actually have to write down some of the questions or actually, fuck you've right got, You've got it, you've got it, you've got it. How's training been? How have you been? What's been going on? This is our second podcast of the week. You've are we actually it. got, are we, are we going to include that bit? Should we? We can include the Christian bit. Yeah. All right, and let's go. So we'll have to start again right now. Well, not the whole thing, but we'll keep we it. Coming, all right, cool, 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 cool. So what's been going on? All right, so, I mean, since you last saw me, which I believe was yesterday. Oh, oh uh, you got your passport on Tuesday, but yesterday we did uh, technique breakdown of Gordon Ryan, Patrick Gaudio. That will be out soon. That's a great video. That will do it well. It might even be out before this, arguably. Probably not. Depends this will come out on editing. Sunday, is now Thursday. Wow, so organized. Yeah. Organized. Okay, so <clears throat> yeah, for me, I've just been training, working my wrestling, working my guard, getting my mobility fully back in my leg. Also, just playing around a bit with the, uh, you know, <clears throat> close leg, far leg, high leg, low leg sort of thing. Lachlan's talking about, oh, I'll go into it a little bit. Basically, you know, not just, you know, spreading your legs so that let's say you're playing north south guard you've got one leg close to your body and the other one can be jousting trying to get inside position on your partner's legs okay. or outside position on the legs i mean again like this is just secondhand info so you're better off giving money to someone else but i've got an instruction on it and lachlan has also got very good details on that so yeah just shout that that's was, a, that's on sub meta is it or is it yeah sub meta and right. i'm sure he's got some shit on bjj fanatics as well and my Fair mine play. is on baa fanatics great if you will other than that that's Wait, it's really. going well you're getting nice and strong getting you got nice a match coming up strong. yeah it's fucking i'm actually looking forward to this match i'm well trained i feel I like you're stronger than ever to be honest cut out bad habits i'm training like an absolute retard right now which yeah, is you know good. probably necessary for the caliber of opponent we are dealing with. Mm -hmm. uh, so yeah, I watched the trials. We did we did a bit of a trials breakdown. I've still got matches to watch, but I was thinking actually to watch that today. That'd be very entertaining. Uh, and yeah, other than that, all going well. What matches are you looking forward to? I'm going to watch the 77 winner. I, I, I'm ashamed to say I hadn't heard of him before. I think it's Elijah Dorsey. That's the yeah, one. I need to, need to watch all of this shit. Apparently he's a gi guy and he was only training no gi for like, nine months or something and then he won it beat nicky ryan fair he play beat nicholas rion <clears throat> that's not an easy match no maybe nicky got tired though loves a vape yeah you said that before can't say that helps all right should we get to some questions let's go uh go on take it how away. to avoid getting countered on the butterfly sweep when they hip switch into a leg drag okay think buddy that your knees are poorly placed if you are butterfly sweeping and they are doing a hip switch into a leg drag you got to keep your knee tight you know on the correct side of your partner's body or else you will get hip switched my friend i think that's more a question of you're starting nice, the man. butterfly sweep from the wrong position and getting hip switched off what do you think of attacking the aoki on the secondary leg in saddle. Well, I think that works. Someone actually asked me about that the other day and you can see Ethan Krellinster did it in the trials. Uh, like the only thing is that if you get to saddle and then try to set it up, I think it's pretty hard to set up without losing control of either the primary or secondary leg. Mm. However, if you get it as like, like Ethan Krellinster did all in one go where you catch the grip and you catch the saddle and you fall back all at the same time. It's all happening as well. It's very busy. Yeah, it's very, I mean then they don't have a chance to free their secondary leg because any extra tension will break their legs. So if you want to demo that, yeah, watch Ethan Krellinson do it. I'm pretty sure Flow Grappling posted it on their page. Uh, so yeah, watch that. I haven't seen many other successful uh, showings of that move from Saddle except for that Ethan Krellinson one. Fair and point. like people show it often in technique videos and stuff, but when you actually try it in training, 
it's not that effective basically it doesn't translate as well it doesn't translate as well yeah but obviously if you discover some new details send them in and uh yeah, yeah. i'll eat my hat ha 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 how about you you've been you know punching any clients again no 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 that was just once wasn't it that was just the once yeah training's good i'm feeling strong recovered from the covid uh we did some training yesterday we actually didn't do a round yesterday just a mountain at the end where we had the reset a few times big david yeah i mean just do what you normally would just do as you normally would um feeling strong feeling good I'm going to do a, uh, a grappling industries tournament soon. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I want to compete. You're again. the king of that, aren't you? I fucking love, yeah. Yeah. I fucking love a grappling industries. The high pace, the low skill, the lots of matches. It just, it's just it for suits you, me. Isn't it? Wow. Did you message them prior to them making it and just say, listen, mate, I need a comp for me? What are you trying to say? Just saying, is that what you asked? Yeah. Yeah, I've said what I wanted <laughs> to say. I thought I'd already been insulting. And at that point, we were just, you know, carry on up. with the insult. Yeah. All right, come on. Stop more, fucking more. assaulting me. Come on in. Uh, what do you consider fundamental BJJ? I feel like it's a hard question to accurately answer. I concur. My, I don't know him, so he's not my friend. But basically, yeah, fundamental BJJ. You could say that that is the four-step system. Take down, pass the guard, uh, go through a hierarchy of dominant positions and then look for submit. a control that leads to a submit. Fucking submit. Submit. Yeah, so the reason it's difficult compared to non-fundamental BJJ, i.e. Hail Mary bullshit, is that you have to be skilled at various different parts of jiu-jitsu in order to be able to actually get the submission. Whereas if you do non-fundamental jiu-jitsu, i.e. just jumping on leg locks, they are available from basically anywhere in jiu-jitsu. So it's, t it's tough to pass a guard. It's also tough to transition from you know, side control to mount to rear mount on a good opponent. And it's hard to get subs and it's also hard to take people down. So you've got four different skills hard there compared to, to the one skill of just jumping on a leg. I guess two skills, jumping on a leg. And I, you could kind of say there's also a four step system to that is like, let's say you enter the legs, that's step one. Step two is put your partner down on their hip. Not entirely necessary, but most of the time it's going to be necessary if you want good breaking pressure. Yep. Step three, you could equate that to going between positions is like transitioning between leg lock positions if you need. Like you could just sub someone from side control, but most of the time you're not going to have success there. You're going to have to take their back or get to mount and sub them from there. True. And then you've got to work the actual braking mechanics, which is or like, you know, exposing the heel or exposing the whatever straight Taking footlock. a limb away. Or, yeah. yeah. And it's all the same. It's basically the same between legs and, uh, so and the traditional jujitsu, but... Yeah, I just think maybe as time goes on, people will be more accustomed to defending the legs. That said, I don't think people will ever be equal when they start jujitsu at defending and attacking leg locks as with other parts, purely because people aren't used to using their legs throughout their life, whereas people always use their arms throughout their life. Fair so fair. it's much easier to shell up your arms than shell up your legs until you get used to that concept. Also, your legs are bigger. It's easier to get inside the legs. Good analysis. Thanks, man. It's my hobby. Good analysis. I'll just get my protein shake. You keep, you, you go, you go, 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 go. Okay. Why do you think, you okay? Why do you think Gordon Ryan runs high rep bodybuilding workouts over strength workouts? I think that's what's working for him. He's uh, going out with that, that lady, Sunny. I think Sunny. Yeah, Sunny. Um, she, who's a bodybuilder and a bodybuilding coach. And that's just what he t she takes him through. And he's on, you have to remember, he's on some test. He's going to be on some Anavai. He's going to be on some Winstroll. He's going to be on some trend. Some sauce. He's going to be on some sauce. And that will do wonders for getting him super jacked and super strong. So I think whatever he's going to do with, you know, making sure he doesn't injure himself in the weights room, which is pretty easy to do if you're a good coach. Yeah. I have a question. Okay. What about, fuck this guy. What about <laughs> bands? Like, you see a lot of the wrestlers do like, ha, ha, with the yeah, bands yeah, and yeah. stuff. You're not going to build muscle doing that. But what's the point? Uh, muscle endurance. It's muscle endurance without fatiguing you. Like, same for the battle ropes. Why don't we do that? It's uh, a good question. Oh, I don't really you don't have like any it. qualifications in it. Go I tell don't, him. I don't really know what I'm doing with that kind of stuff. 
with the, with the, the wrestling bands and the moves. And I guess you could do it for time. Like, again, you could set up a circuit. You could do like, okay, we're going to do a circuit of, you know, a k- traditional conditioning circuit, like X amount of calories on the bike, X amount or X amount of time on the bike, X amount of time on the bands, X amount of an exercise. Rotate that through like five, six times. I saw Taza post in one where he was doing like little shakes with the band. Yeah. And then he'd do the other arm, little yeah. shakes, and then he'd do some big shakes like that. All well that. and good. How did he go at trials? <laughs> he did all right though. He's he doing, did, I mean, he I watch right. his He's, matches and he is astoundingly he good. It's very good. Yeah. But I think, I don't think it's 100% necessary to do, to do all that kind of banded stuff, but yeah, there does seem to be a lot of benefit to doing it. I should look into it. Maybe we'll look into words. doing a little bit of it. I'm going to be eating we, my words. We started doing plyo. That was good. Then Plyos are great. It's going to help, you know? That's Yeah. So we, we would do that on a conditioning day, not on our weight stays. Okay, fine. So I guess- if, if you are interested, so here we go. If you are interested in doing the, the bands, the, the, the band endurance work, uh, you would do that on the conditioning day or you could do it after a wrestling, like after your work, after a jiu-jitsu workout, but you're already going to be pretty tired. But I'd say... Save it on your conditioning days. You could set up a conditioning workout for time or for certain rep schemes. There goes your line bike. Fuck you. See you later. Fucking put it down, cunt. Yes. Yeah. Try. Yes. Because <laughs> yeah. I, yeah. I rolled it back and forward. Yeah. On, he realized, you, he, you realized he couldn't get it. Yeah. Fucking yes. That's a win. Let's You're call right. it there. That's, I'm great. That's a great. Yeah. We've gone for eight minutes. <laughs> 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 good talk, guys. Yeah, so the bands, I mean, look, you're gonna, it's, it's, it's good for building up endurance in the arms, for sure. So you would add that into a conditioning day workout, and you would have a conditioning routine wow. for doing that. It seems a lot like those exercises where it's like trying to mimic the sport too much. Exactly. Let's, we'll get back to... So say like, let's, let's say you're doing like an airdyne workout to build your like, your, the, the, the gas in your lungs... So, so that you can play guard better. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Just so you can build up your aerobic capacity. If we, <laughs> that's how I play guard. Yeah. <laughs> If we're doing ropes, it's just going to help build up the endurance in your arms as well. Like forearms for sure. Yeah, and it's not going to fuck you over. Like it's not going to leave you super sore. Yeah. Okay. It's not okay. going to leave you super sore, but it's, it's, not, like going to, a, it's not going to get you stronger workout. unless you're very weak to start with. It's a diet workout. But to answer the original question, which you weren't happy with that question. Fuck why does I wasn't even listening. Uh, Gordon Ryan, bodybuilder, high reps, workouts over strength workouts. It's just It just seems to be working for him. I lo- I lo- you see a lot of these fellas... World champion athletes, very good level athletes, just doing random strength programs, and it seems to work for them. So, why would they change yeah. that if they're not getting injured? Like, I watched some of uh, Gordon Ryan's strength videos, and the main thing is just what he's probably got a bunch of injuries. They're working around his injuries. He's already very strong on a lot of source. He's he's going to be fucking strong, and he's got good technique. That's fine for him. Yeah, fair enough. It's going to work for him. Fair enough. He probably does do heavy lifts as well. He would I'm do sure, heavy lifts, but his, sure form's not, his form's like not great on stuff. It's really not great. Lots of partial reps, lots of half reps. Jesus Christ. Yeah. It's fine. It's, it's working for him. A slating indeed. Yeah. Nah, it wasn't a slating. It wasn't a slating. It was all right. Uh, so here's a good one. Realistically, how significant is the threat of a good ghillie if you can actually shoot a good single? So I think the threat of the ghillie really is only there if your partner can lock up a close guard or a high elbow with the overhook. Anything else is just going to lead to a spin out or you just standing up out of it. So let's say you get a single leg. Like most people, they do wrestling at the start. They keep shooting for doubles and singles. They have some success. Then they get tired and then they shoot for a double or a single and they just get guillotined because they let go of the leg. My friend, if you have a single leg and someone puts you in a front headlock, run the pipe and they will fall. And when they fall, just don't go to your knees. Or if you do manage, if, you, if they do manage to pull you to your knee, just four point and shake them off your head and like, just try it with your friend. Tell them, squeeze my neck as hard as you can. You get a single leg, run the pipe. Their body weight's on you. You move out the way and they just fall where you were standing. And your your head is going to come out of it. And like another example, watch Isaac Michel versus uh, Kane and Duarte, right? Kane and outweighs Isaac by whatever ridiculous number. And he is his testosterone probably quadruple Isaac's. Not actually sure about that one, but probably anyway. It's more. It's more. Yeah, it's, it's more. It's, certainly enhanced it's certainly above anyway yeah above norm normality and uh yeah basically even if you're super deep in it you might like grit your teeth together your neck might get twisted a bit but if you just stand up you will be fine 
There we go. Just stand so that's up. That's it. Just stand up. Honestly, Tripod. try it with your mates. Get a single leg. Get them to wrap your neck. Don't panic and let go of the single leg like a fucking coward. Just hold on and run the pipe. <laughs> Don't be a coward. Don't be a fucking coward. All there right. it is. Great details. Yeah, good, good chicken laxa burp right there. That was oh, great. Yeah. yeah. You want to do this one? Give, it to, give me the question. How's the injury? Will you be at the next trials? Uh, I'm all good. Um, <laughs> will I be at the next trials? Yeah, I could, I could come watch in Croatia. I don't think I will. Is it going to be in Croatia? Apparently. Wow. Fantastic. I've heard. Could be, could Fantastic. be, could be very wrong. Uh, okay. Let's go to the next question. Any legends of the sport you'd love to meet and chat with? Oh, Owen Flanagan. <laughs> uh, what ones that I haven't already <clears throat> met and chat with, chatted with. Got a good gas bag with. <laughs> <laughs> Not really. Hold your grace. I've already met and chatted with him. Hello. 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 Nice, nice to meet you. Uh, that was great. Maybe like, now I've met everyone. Nah, maybe like Marcel. But I'd want to get him on the pints first because I don't want to have some dry conversation about being wholesome and respectful. I want yeah. I want the real Marcelo to come out. I want to give him bastard, a, yeah. you know, yeah, I want to I want to see what you really think. What, where are you really from? Get him on the nose beers. Exactly. Get him on the nose beers. Get, get him on the pints. I want to see him be horrible. You know who is a great uh, mentor is Helio Seneca. That man will haragoshi anyone, man, woman or child. In any setting, once he gets any uh, setting, once he gets some pints in him, he will haragoshi anyone. Nice, any setting, like an Olympian, like a Yudo Olympian. Maybe he's watched the DVD. Okay, uh, take it away, sport. Hmm. How to win ADCC without wrestling? That that was a question. Uh, I think that's been done before quite often, hasn't it? People pulling guard. Yeah, like a good a good guard pull strategy like Gordon did against Bushesha. Yep. No wrestling required. You just do a shit pull, make sure that you've got a good uh like it's actually quite hard. If you just do loads of front headlock specifics and you just shoot a single leg, like convincingly enough that you can hold onto the single leg for three seconds, then you can pull guard and like it's pretty hard to chase the back against a fresh opponent when you're in a front headlock you need to like break them down you need to have that like they're resting for a moment and then you make the Capitalize switch to the back it. yeah otherwise like if you watch the match gordon versus hulk he got to the front headlock eventually but it was still a big struggle going from front head to the back he had to go via the crucifix he almost got tipped over went to the went to the crotch lock and uh, managed to get the back through that but i think it's a long process to go from front like like facing them to behind them you know that's yeah. pretty difficult i know there's whole dvds on it i think giancarlo's got one but basically chest chest to back facing them chase the back facing the same way as them it's pretty hard to get around the arms and secure the back without someone like pulling guard or something you know i think i think that's hard but can be so can that, be done though yeah and in that case if you could if you just got really good at leg locks and you were just the best leg locker in the world like that's all you need, really. Gordon Ryan didn't, didn't wrestle in his last um, ADCC, did he? Or did he wrestle with Victor Hugo? He may have, he may have wrestled like one match, but I'm pretty sure he pulled guard against Victor Hugo. And then he just got taken down by Nicky Rod. Laglock Nicky Rod ran through that division. Yeah, he does like scrimmage wrestling where he's not, they're both, not both starting standing. He'll start from a seated position, get, get to a good wrestling position, Go. and then he'll wrestle. wrestle. But he'll never wrestle from even except for the Gaudio match, which he did. But I think the reason he does that in no time limit matches is because he knows some people are going to have a... He probably analyzes if someone has actually good hand fighting and wrestling where they'll wear him down first and he'll pull guard. And then someone like Gaudio, where he knew it's like a lot of waiting and frustrating. So Gordon just goes for the collar tie and just keeps snapping his head till he gets a bit tired and then forces a shot when he's tired. So he gets him you know, an easy counter takedown or an easy sprawl to counter or just goes back to clubbing the head 
I think head clubs to tire people out are very much underrated, especially... Shout out Sylvia. People aren't very good at clearing collar ties, I've noticed. Like, they don't do elbow passes very well. They just like, right, they just shake their head around really hard. Like Waste a, a lot of energy. Like a, yeah, like a, you know, rabid dog. Like, like a racehorse. Just like a racehorse. They just... <laughs> racehorse just tearing, tearing little cats apart. Like a racehorse. Slap, slap my knee one more time. Jam. I'll come. I can't. Um, when was the last time you ate eat Tokyo? Shout out James Cooper. He needs to know. He needs to know. When was the last time uh, you ate Tokyo? It was quite a while ago. I'm sorry to say that I feel like the quality of fish has dropped. Oh my God. Like, correct me if I'm wrong, but sushi should be pretty much fresh. fresh. Yeah, like, and it is good. It is good sushi. But when I go to other places such as Shout out James Cooper, Chizu Izakaya. You, you know that one? It's I'm actually not, on delivery as well. I'm not a big sushi fan, to be honest. Uh, too much gluten. Yeah, there is They do actually. do shrimp, though. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, I yeah. would... Hey, hey, hey. Uh, but, yeah, if you get a good sushi, it makes all the difference. If you get a shitty sushi, you start to taste that, like, fishy aftertaste. You know that your your piss is going to stink, right? That's, stink. that's not the one. And, yeah, so... It's been not too long. These days, if I go there, I'll just get the bento box with some sort of like Love that. the W teriyaki bento. They do uh, salmon fillet and then teriyaki chicken. And there's no tofu or any of that bollocks. Don't want the fucking miso Illuminati soup. getting their hands on me testosterone. Miso soup? Yeah, they do a delicious miso soup, like but miso it's not soup. the most delicious miso soup. Again, I'm sorry, Eat Tokyo. I like you because you're cheap, but Chizu Izakaya shits all over it. You want to go? Or I want to go. Uh, I'm just scrolling through looking how, for. How much better will someone do in BJJ matches if they start lifting weights? It really depends how weak you are to start with. So if you're really weak and you start lifting weights and you get a lot stronger, you will do better. No doubt. You reckon? Yeah. Nah. You don't think? It's better to just be weak, isn't it? More honourable. Yeah, less cowardly. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, you're a coward if you have to use strength. Yep. Uh, there you go. Here we go. How do I defend the shoulder crunch early and late stage? Please and thank you. Thanks. Thanks. Next question. Uh, so basically, what I would do early stage is just, you know, bring your head so you're facing them, so you're face to face, like, like you're going to give them a kiss, and then you turn your elbow in and retract the elbow. So... Face to face. Late stage. Your hand has already been caught and they've got wedges on your hips or something. So you can't just bring yourself face to face. I would try, even with the wedges, I would try to build height so I can put my hand flat on the floor. And then once my hand is flat on the floor, I can basically use that to build height even more and then pummel your leg to the inside. So use an inside hip post with your elbow on the inside and try to pummel your free leg, free knee to the inside. So... Even if they crank your arm, you can hit a hip switch or you can just like basically pull your arm out. You need that height, man. Need the height, man. You need the height. Get, gotta get high. Shout out Towley. You can't just tap and reset like we did the other day? No, I don't tap. You just, just say, oh, hold on, hold on. My, my arm's going to break there if you carry on. Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah. If you, if you on, feel like your arm is going to like break, you just say, listen, mate. All right, calm down. Like my arm is going to break there. Let's just start again from a position where my, I'm safe. And then we can like carry on sparring until someone gets a sub. Yeah. <laughs> it's weird that like. We did that yesterday. It's weird. Yeah. Hold on, mate. My neck's really hurting here. Uh, can we start again? Can oh, this is again? another one. He, he sent me a, a DM clarifying his question. Go on. If in between weight classes, oh, your thoughts me. on being lean and muscular for either. I think what he's, so what he clarified is, I am a glass cannon at 66, but at 70, I feel like I can't overpower people. A glass He's, cannon. Is that what he said? That was, well, that was a DM afterwards. I can't be bothered going for so it. So he feels like he, he feels too weak at 66. No, at 66, he feels like... A glass cannon. Like he's going to smash at any moment. His limbs will break apart, but okay. he's stronger than everyone. Yeah. And at 70, he just feels like, because it's a different weight category, he feels yeah. like... And he's not strong enough to do damage, but his limbs are safer. Um, why not just invest time into putting on more muscle mass so you can be more comfortable at the 77 kg division? 
I don't now, know if he's even talking about ADCC and 77. I think he might be talking about just random whatever 72 kilo division. But oh, just just go to the division that way you feel safer. Yeah, that's no, why. No. I, that's yeah. why I, I sent him a DM. Actually, we shouldn't have we shouldn't have even answered because I've already sent him an answer. But no, but it's good because other people are gonna maybe they're thinking the same. Yeah, so yeah. you want to feel comfortable? You could just DM everyone. Hold but on. Yeah, one of my f- go on. Sorry. Basically. I used to be that, you know, I used to be a fucking glass cannon, but I think it's better to just be a natural cannon, you know, just go up a weight flesh division. Flesh cannon. Yeah, flesh cannon where you're strong and like strong for your weight. And that will also translate into being not breaking apart all the time. For sure. Yeah, for sure. For sure. You do, are you going to? Yeah, one of my clients, he had a question for you. For you. What the fuck? Go on. How to deal with heisting opponents in that kneeling position Nicky Rod did in Quintet recently. Is, is well, you have to push them down and snap them. Basically, you're wrestling at that stage. Uh, post on the head as well. It's actually worth doing a specific sparring from that position, I think. We've done a little bit of that before in our wrestling privates. Shout out Andre Tau- Andrew Tauchi, uh, Bigfoot PT on Instagram. Uh, basically, just like posting on someone's head. There's not much they can do if they're in a seated position. You just like keep face posting them. Yep. Eventually, they'll realize that this is this is horrible, and I'm just my neck is just getting, you know, smashed backwards over and over again. And they'll either stand up all the way, or they'll just go back to a sort of half seated position. You know, where they're like one legs up, they're, they're on wrist. their shin, but their butt is on their heel, so they yeah. don't really have any explosion going forward until they lift their butt off their heel. Yeah. So yeah, that, like I think just like just constantly post patting their face until they either go back down to the floor or stand up is is probably going to be a good strategy. That said, got to be aware of the setups that people use. You know, if you post on their head too much, they might predict it once. They might push their head in so you get a bit of tension, then they'll thumb post and clear your elbow. But, you know, that's just wrestling for you, isn't it? That's just it. Fair play. Uh, Chris Tomo has asked this twice now, so I mean, I'll just answer it. On a scale of one to ten, how much juice is worth the squeeze? Is this an actual question? How much juice? I'm is not worth actually the sure, but now that he's asked it twice, I feel like he needs an answer. All right. Well, I'm sure he won't watch the podcast though. <laughs> uh, <clears throat> it depends where your current testosterone levels lie and where your current hormone horm- hormone profile is. If your test levels are already very low, perhaps you'd benefit. If you've already exhausted the the natural elements of trying to increase your testosterone via sleep, good nutrition, lifting weights, going to bed early, doing all that stuff, which we know is very wholesome for your body to do. And mind. And mind. If it's just not going anywhere, then you could look into testosterone replacement therapy. But when we're talking about juice, we're all going to assume you know, the ways to wild performance stack. Is that gonna is that gonna be beneficial long term for your health? Probably not. Now, how much is it worth the squeeze? It'll make you very, very strong. If you're lifting if you're lifting and you're training, you'll you, shout you, out a placido. You will <laughs> fucking re- you will recover and you will get fucking stacked. Placido went from yogi to like He looks great. Fucking, he looks great. Bulgogi. I don't Bulgogi. even, bro. He looks fucking stacked. Like an animal. I mean, I didn't, realize how, lift- I didn't realize how short he was though. We have been lifting weights. Like I have been lifting weights for longer than Placido yeah. now. And he is probably dead lifting like 300 kilos at this stage. And probably, he yeah. looks like it. And I am not dead lifting 300 kilos. <laughs> Maybe over a full set, I'll get to 300 kilos. But yeah, but <laughs> If like if you want to see how much Chris Thompson, check out your mate Placido. If you want to find out if it's worth the squeeze, that man has squeezed every last. He looks like he's out, out of, of the needle. Yeah, he looks like it certainly. Excellent. Shout out if he's natty. I doubt it. But if he's shit. natty, if he's natty, I'm well getting done a new to coach. You. <laughs> yeah. What the fuck? Okay. Uh, this is a shit question. Uh, which kind of guard is better, chasing submissions or looking for sweeps? I think you're thinking about it all wrong, my friend. The chase is just for advantage in any sense. You don't choose the advantage, you just take. You can have an overall strategy where if it's more open positions, you can favor one thing over the other. But as soon as you get into like a game where 
your opponent is forcing you to react in certain ways. Like, let's say it's just someone who's a white belt. You just do whatever the fuck you want. But if it's someone who's good and like half the time you do what you want and half the time you're forced to react to what they wanted to do, you're not really going to get a choice. So for me, I would say you're always looking for submissions. You prioritize submissions. Second, you will prioritize like back takes from bottom. And then finally, you will prioritize sweeps. If you're playing guard, that to me makes sense. That's right? a little, that's the hierarchy. That's the hierarchy. Submission, and like, ah, oh, I missed the sub, but all right, I'll take, I'll take the back instead. Ah, I missed the back. Let's Fuck it, I'll go for a sweep. Yeah, I'll just try and get, just back get on whatever top. I can. And you know, like, the, I've never actually thought of it like that. How would you do it? If I'm how, how, what have you been doing? <laughs> <laughs> if I'm on bottom, I'm going to try and get the legs. or get on top. Actually, yeah, to be honest, I'm going to look for the submission. Yeah, failing that. Uh, actually. You do probably do that. Right? Actually, I do probably do that. I'll try and get to the back or I'll try and get back on top. Yeah. So Sometimes I, I just like to stand, give a big, big push and I'll just try and stand back up. Yeah. That's why, for me, sitting on the legs from top is no longer a good strategy unless... You've completely given up on getting to your partner's back or or finishing them with like upper body submissions. Probably you shouldn't pull from top to attack the legs because then the option of back take and sweep is already obviously gone. So basically, if you miss out on your leg lock attempt and they don't, let's say, turn away and give you the back, if you don't come up and take your sweep, which you were on top anyway, you've just literally lost two points. So... It ain't worth it, is it's, it? It's not the same game. Juice and squeeze. Exactly. Juice it's, and squeeze. If you're talking about game theory, it ain't the same game, my son. Best ways to measure body fat percentage in London. What body fat percentage is optional? It is, <laughs> is optimal. Um, I really don't care about this kind of stuff, to be honest, unless like you're really concerned about it for health benefits. But to be honest, you're going to know at like, any stage what kind of like, if, if, you, if you're too fat, you're going to know. So... In terms of like body fat percentage, unless you're a bodybuilder, and I don't think a lot of competitive bodybuilders are listening to this podcast, it doesn't really matter. But if you were to do it, you'd try and get a DEXA scan. BTX London. Yep, you could use the in-body. The DEXA, the DEXA scan is a little bit uh, more accurate. But at the end of the day, it doesn't fucking matter. Just eyeball it. Just eyeball it. Literally just, li literally just eyeball it. And if you want to lose some weight, then you're like, hey, I'm not really happy with this little bit of body fat. Get into a calorie deficit for eight to 12 weeks and then you can see that body fat go away. What Correct. percentage is optimal? I don't know. Probably under 20%, 15 to 20% for below 10 for is not optimal. I was reading somewhere that yeah. it's like 11% is optimal. Yeah. Below, well, yeah. They say below 10 for athletes is not Bad, ideal. Yeah. Not ideal. So yeah. yeah, I'd say for the average punter, fifteen to twenty percent. If you can get under fifteen, you're gonna feel pretty good. You're probably gonna be a more trained individual. Yeah. And you'll be like, oh, I feel 10 good. Ten to fifteen is ideal basically. Let's say that, yeah. Let's 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 go with that answer. Let's put our signatures next to that. TM. TNs. TNs. Oh, I was in Croatia the other day yep. going down some steps with okay. my lady by my side and Two youths are walking up the steps and they go, ooh, TNs. And yeah. Thanks, I, mate. I bought a pair of just for our session and I've worn them once. You lost them? No, they're sitting at in the house at home. I need what to bring the them fuck? in. What the fuck? Anyway. What the fuck? Uh, all right. Wrestling drills legit or nah? Duck under, throw by. I feel like there's a lot of value on those wrestling drills you said. Yes, yeah. So difference between, let's say we do, we shit talk about speed drilling and jiu-jitsu a lot where you're just going, bah, 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 right? Obviously, that's not worth it because... Just, just a quick heads up. We've got to finish in the next, I would say, four minutes. Well, great, because I've run out of questions. So <laughs> let's say jiu-jitsu, right? You want to hit a guard pass, yeah, okay? If you drill a toriando a million times, you'll be very good at getting your legs past your partner's legs and only that one reaction... Okay, that is not the end of the match. That might be the beginning of a sequence of guard passes. Same way in judo, you might hit, you might hit a really fast Oichigari, let's say, an inside trip. 
that could be the end of the match, right? But a good judo player won't just have an Ochi, a really good Ochigari. They will have a really good Ochigari and a really good Sienagi or something. They'll have a forward and backwards throw. So they'll have, and both of those are complete, like, match-ending techniques, okay? So same in, like, I guess wrestling, you don't really have a match-ending technique because you don't have a Nippon, but, you know, they tally the scores up, so, and it's quite easy to get, you can get a tech four, let's say, if you get loads of, uh, if you rack up loads of points against your opponent, but... In jiu-jitsu, you need a more varied, like, selection of moves that you are you are good at. But you don't need, to, you need, like, one or two moves that you are the best at. And the only things that finish a jiu-jitsu match are submissions. So the only thing that would be, would have value in drilling at, like, full retard speed would be something like a flying armbar where it's from zero to hero in one go. It kind of like, has to be that way, too. Yeah, exactly. You yeah. can't go slow. There's exactly yeah because there's falling body weight so you have to react you know at whatever same for jumping system so yeah. you gotta go hard yeah exactly but for most of the moves in jiu-jitsu the value of you the diminishing marginal gains from you getting like one percent better at this one move is much lower like basically the gains are diminishing Diminishing returns. Diminishing returns, yeah. We're just going to quickly pile through these uh, YouTube comments and make sure we read them. Yugen or Ogen or whatever your name is, you have the best grappler ghoul posture I've ever seen. Keep that hunt strong, bro. Shout out RuneScape, man. If you want to fight me in the wilderness, just let's fucking have it. There cunt. we go. Oh, this is from Charles Allen Price, 36 2. That's, yeah, 36 2. Who is that? Ha ha ha. I love this podcast. Uh, yeah, weird. Don't know if it's possible, but when you discuss techniques, it'll be fantastic if you could demonstrate or put a video up while you're doing it, while you discuss it. Yeah. We've been talking. It's about, coming. It's coming, my G. We've been threatening that. And, we um, should pay that guy some money. We will do that. Homage. Uh, as I was hearing Owen describe the... Con uh, go on, go on. It. What was it? What was no, it? no, no, no. It's not worth reading. Owen, what is your opinion on hips, back, loose style passing Elijah used against Nikki? One, how the fuck do you deal with that style as a guard player? Two, is it just for a form of effective stalling that's rewarded by the ADCC rule set? I don't think it's rewarded by the ADCC rule set. That is my one gripe with that statement. Because, well, maybe if you go to these, like, if you go to trials or something and they don't have all the greatest judges there, they won't award the stalling calls. But in my experience the ADCC judges are fucking good and they give stalling calls straight away. So the we, hips went, back, we talked about that last pod. Yeah, the hips back thing, like it's annoying, but you've got to basically just go into like high sting methods. You can't, you can't play traditional guard because you're not going to be able to elevate and you're not going to be able to get your legs under and you're probably not going to be able to get the double coochie or coochie as someone called it this morning. Coochie. Double coochie. Nice. Pussy. Nice. Coochie. Vagina. Love that coochie. And uh, so yeah, like if you want, Oh, sorry, mate. Oh, sorry. So if you watch Gordon versus, let's say, Jackson Souza. Oh, shout out. Uh, shout out. Uh, shout out. Uh, he deals with it with heisting and that sort Terrible. of stuff. Uh, like a lot of people play that, used to play that style more. I think especially like Guy Dons who like to like jump around and stuff like that. So it's hard to make connection there. You've got to like go up and down to force their posture to change and like force them to go from kneeling to standing over and over again. So yeah, you mix the double coo coochies with, with uh, you know, collar snaps and that sort of stuff. I would say again, Gordon is the what is the one to watch for actually forcing engagement from the bottom position. Fucking beautiful. beautiful. I do not take this podcast for granted. I do not take these podcasts for granted. Is that literally a question? Apparently he's just letting us know what I he thinks. I don't take these podcasts for granted. <laughs> What are your thoughts on a very niche colonoscopy guard? Colonoscopy guard. Yeah, no, north, south, cock and mouth. Yeah, Check it out on Jay Bell. Fanatics. Jay Bell, that's the one. Greetings, Charles. Could you please tell me, could you please that's sell so me this? Green, greetings, Charles. Can you please sell me the same <laughs> story? an alien? Can you, Have they made contact? Can you please sell me the same steroids you use? Kind regards, brackets, we aren't the police, close brackets. Uh... Perfect. Check out. I go to Waste the Well in Austin. That's crazy. That's that's the one that I've been using. I reckon I would get to 110 kgs and I would have the worst acne you've ever seen 
if I jumped on the source. I already am bald and have acne, so I feel like at this stage I may as well just get on it. Yeah, yeah. I, I think when I do, I will look like just an acne carpet. <laughs> if you if I R N C you, my forearms just, are just gonna pop pus in your fucking. The issue eyeballs. is like if you fucking get on it like a big mega dosage you won't be able to train. The acne will be so sore and so painful. Have you seen some really? of the bad acne? Yeah, mate. No, the acne haven't. can be legit. That's what I, that, I think that's what would happen to me. I got fucking bullshit sensitive skin. I'll get fucked, I think. I only get face acne really though. Okay. Might not be too bad then. But Depends what you do. Would be. Again, I'm not an expert on steroids. So would I don't steroids know. make your ears bigger? No. Growth hormone, maybe. Yeah, growth hormone, yeah. Potentially. Make your jaw a bit bigger. We gotta finish Shout up. I've, I've got a. Uh, I've got to go. Yeah. coming I've in. I've got. To You're going to Bournemouth go. this weekend. That's all well and good. You've got some instructionals, guys. Remember, if you have lots of questions about God, yeah, I've got to shout out the guys from Croatia because I feel like that got deleted, didn't it? <clears throat> Yeah, yeah, shout them out, shout them out. Yeah, shout out Eminem, Mario, and Marino. Shout out. Uh, yeah, they'll be coming over soon. So if you want to fight them, just come to Rogers. Cool. There we go. Uh, Yep, if you're asking questions, go buy his instructionals. He answers them. Give him some money. Sometimes. That's what you can do. If you want to get strong, just join join my program. If you eat well and you sleep well and you do the program properly, you will get excellent results. If you like, live in Austin, Texas, waste the well. Waste the well. And the program. And the program. And the program. And the program. Guys, like, subscribe, do all that. Great to see you. Yeah. Thanks, man. Good to see you. Yeah. Burn my hand. Yeah, oh, that's not actually that hot. Two, three, four, yep. five. Yep, yep, yep. Yeah, bye. Bye.